Michigan will play a crucial role in yet another part of the 2024 election this November. Control of the U.S. House. Power over the closely split chamber could come to just a few toss-up races, two of which are here in the Mitten State. 9 in 10's Sheldon Kraus has our campaign 2024 coverage from Lansing. I think we have in Michigan um, the most interesting mix of competitive races up and down the ticket of any state in the country. While racking up visits from presidential and vice presidential nominees and drawing in millions for a competitive Senate race, Michigan voters should also keep their attention on control of the U.S. House, which Michigan will likely play a hand in deciding. Two uh, of our districts are in the top 20 uh, districts out of 435 na nationally in terms of how the uh, parties are going to devote resources, in terms of the likelihood that they'll determine uh, the, the direction and uh, the uh, House margin. Mid-Michigan's 7th District is being opened by Democrat Alyssa Slotkin, a three-term representative who is running for the state's open U.S. Senate seat. Former state lawmakers Tom Barrett and Curtis Hertel are vying for the Lansing Area District, which includes more Democratic urban centers and more Republican rural communities. There, you know, there's no reason to believe that the 7th or the 8th won't be uh, razor thin right up until all the votes are counted. The neighboring 8th District stretches from Genesee County to eastern parts of Midland County and we'll see another open race with two strong candidates. Democratic State Senator Krista McDonald Rivett is facing Paul Young, a former prosecutor, news anchor, and Republican candidate in 2020 and 2022. Those districts are more likely to reflect the national patterns. They'll have no incumbency bonus, and so whoever wins the presidential election in those districts is likely to win uh, the House elections. Both of northern Michigan's congressional seats are considered safe Republican holds, likely continuing the tenure of Rep. Jack Bergman in the 1st District and Rep. John Mulinar in the 2nd. Analysts also suggested voters keep an eye on the 3rd District race, where first-term Democrat Hillary Skolton is facing a challenge from Republican Paul Hudson, and the 10th District, where Congressman and former U.S. Senate candidate John James is facing a rematch from Democrat Carl Marlinga. Those districts are districts that you would watch if there's a national majority for, for one uh, party. Analysts say that data is limited on congressional district trends, but Democrats may be moving closer to a lead given increased enthusiasm in recent weeks. The world is looking maybe not like it's completely leaning to Democrats right now, but the momentum is on the Democrat side, and that's a real worry. For Republicans, they're going to depend on the top of the ticket. In Lansing, Sheldon Krause, 9 and 10 News.